To build a prize-winning roadster, you need patience. This thing was supposed to be done. You need brains. What car is this? You need to improvise. Roasters don't need air conditioning. And you definitely need attitude. You know he's going to hate me. Barry White is absolutely going to hate me after all this is done. But to win here at the Grand National Roadster Show, this show can make and break a business. You need more. The judges will get down and they'll look at every single thing that you did. They will actually lay on their backs, hold mirrors. Put a hot rod guy. That's why I hate it. Against a street rod guy. I don't have the final say. If I did, we'd already win. Sparks will fly. You know what? I've never met Jimmy Shine. Barry White and Jimmy Shine. Fiberglass cars and the swoopy grills. We can't always go backwards. We gotta go forward. We gotta keep thinking of new things. Hot rod versus street rod. Where nice guys finish last. We're not show car guys, we're race car guys. Win, lose, or draw, it's gonna be a great car. It's a build-off for the Grand National Roadster Show. Pomona, California is Hot Rod Central. At the Grand National Roadster Show, reputations are made and shattered. This is more than a car show trophy. This is one of the few trophies nationwide that can make and break a business, can make and break a builder. The judges ask for nothing more than perfection. They're all just as good as they can be. But somewhere along the line, somebody messed up. They didn't get something right. Winning is about getting every detail right for the judges and for the 40,000 fans who'll come for the show. There are 350 contenders in 10 categories. The ego category, easy. America's most beautiful roadster. The prestige trophy, the People's Choice Award. It's right, very it's close competition. Yeah. Every car is a winner. Hot Rod Radical Jimmy Shaw. He's contesting his first Grand National Roadster show. My dad was a hot rodder when he was a kid. But I don't know. When we were kids, we never had like bedtime stories with three bears and stuff like that. It was always stories of my dad talking about running from the cops, street racing, and I didn't really care about the three bears. I'd rather hear about <laughs> running from the law. Not that I do that much anymore since yesterday. Just 33, Jimmy's built custom motorcycles for big names like Billy Idol and Bruce Springsteen. But his other passion is traditional hot rods. I was in, you know, third grade and I was drawing pictures. I mean, I knew exactly what a Chevy motor looked like. I could draw a carburetor perfectly. I could draw a motor perfectly, like proportions, everything. And that's what I knew and that's what I liked. Jimmy wants this title badly, but so does this guy. Barry White, he's a street rod hothead. I was there till 11 o'clock last night doing my job. And I come by here and there's nobody here, man. The whole hot rod industry, you know, I mean, has, has had a big resurgence of the old cars. I, I grew up around that stuff. I was a little kid playing in those cars. My dad had those kind of cars, you know. You know, we also have to go forward. You know, we can't always go backwards. We gotta go forward. We gotta, we gotta keep thinking of new things. After tasting victory at the 2002 Grand National, Barry's hungry for more. He's the hot favorite for the People's Choice Award. They've got their eyes on the same prize. But Jimmy Shine and Barry White are poles apart. Jimmy builds traditional hot rods here at the SoCal Speed Shop. Basically, everything we do here is like post-war, pre-Elvis. So it's very traditional styling. So with all the stuff we got to do, and That's you're included in about half of it, we've got Jimmy will build the entry, but his boss, Pete Chaporis, will keep but him on track. I can do total assembly in like three to four weeks, depending on just how complicated okay, so stuff can be. See, it's go to Jimmy came to me 
I think it's going on seven years ago. Shoot me. He's got a bit of an attitude and he's got a lot of tattoos. Neither one of those things ever bothered me much, so, you know, I'm okay with that. He's very, very clever. And every time he gets a little too clever, it bites him in the ass. <laughs> Should have gone to school, got an education. Listen to your mom. Should have listened to my mom. Should have. We're going to build a 32 roaster that's all 32 Ford, and um, all the bumps and reveals and door handles and all that stuff are all going to be left on the car. And I think the thing that's going to maybe put us in the running is our attention to detail. What car is this? I think he's writing notes to his girlfriend or something. Barry White doesn't care much for tradition. His passion is sleek, modern fiberglass street rods. If we could build a 36 Ford today with today's technology, how would you make it look? How would you, you know, how, how would you make the lines flow? The Concept 36 is conceived by Barry and his designer, Chris Brown. And we always want to make something look like it's moving while it's sitting still. That's really, really important. It's a concept basically between Chris and I. Chris put it on paper and got it all dimensionally correct. We just wanted to go for a real swoopy, very sleek car. Um, it's, it's more like a concept car in that respect. Uh, get it a little more sporty and a little faster, you know, just get, it, get a good look to it. These street rods sell for up to half a million dollars, but the big bucks don't impress rival Jimmy Shine. Fiberglass cars and the this and the that and the swoopy grills and the names. What's up with the names of these cars? Slickster, Sportster, Boydster, whatever. You know, can't you call it uh, my car? Jimmy is all about breathing life into an old wreck. He saved this one from the scrap heap. I was finishing my bike and I had to pay for paint and it's like 500 bucks I could have put towards the bike but instead, you know, dude, I'm not going to pass this thing up, 500 bucks. In his book, you don't build a hot rod by throwing money at it, you just follow tradition. I just think along the same lines as the guys that were building cars, you know, 50, 60 years ago. Nothing was high dollar. I mean, right now, like in the rotting world, everything's high dollar and there's you want to go? It's what can money buy? And that's not. I mean, that's how hot rodding started. Poor broke kids. They want to go fast. It wasn't a bunch of rich guys sitting around, you know, buying cars. This build-off is a contest between old and new. A contest Barry White and his team aim to win. I love it when the boss gets his doilies in a bunch. Goddamn short. Chad Vogeli is Barry's right-hand man. I didn't say that. Chad's in charge of the framework for the Concept 36. Suspension, fittings, and trim fall to metal man Richie Nagira. Barry's a really cool guy, except for when he gets his uh, moods, but which is not too hard. Though. Are you talking shit about me? Yeah, yeah, I didn't hear it, but I know you're talking I can tell by the look on your face you're talking shit. So much for Barry White's dream team. That's how he is. At SoCal, Jimmy Shine also has an expert team on call, but he prefers to work alone. His 32 Ford Roadster will take 4,000 man hours, most of them Jimmy's, as he builds or searches for each authentic part. we're going to started out probably in the 40s or 50s dealing in surplus aircraft equipment parts pieces nuts and bolts today he's after a genuine bolt for the engine oil pan or anything else that catches his eye yeah, sometimes I'll come here I won't even know what I'm looking for I'll just know I want something just go fishing through all these different bins Jimmy is a detail freak. Perfection is his obsession. You never hit a car 100% the first time. You're always revising things. You do something and you don't, you're not really too happy with it. You go home and you're laying in bed at night and you can't sleep. 
kinds of neat stuff. And you can't get that thought out of your head about that one little thing. It's great stuff. You know what? Maybe no one will ever see it, but as long as I know it's there, it's gonna piss me off. Well, what about this part that goes in the paint? I'm not really that worried about the ones out of the head. If I just had something nicer I could use, that'd be fine. Yeah. That goes in the pan. Yeah, that's that's not a problem. Okay. We're, we can but do I want something cut. with a 90 cut. I, but I've got header clearance issues. In Barry White's camp, tradition is a dirty word. Take that apart, take the starter off. Let's seal it up tight. He's using a brand new Chevy V8, and he's painting it red. Anything that's not going to be used. Okay. Fill all the holes that aren't going to be used and make it smooth. Take it to the paint shop. I want to take it to the paint shop today, Monday by Wednesday. It's got to be at the paint shop, trans and motor. The street rod will be red all over, right down to the frame. For 20 months, the team have been designing and fabricating. Hell yeah! each part of the Concept 36 a one-off creation. But they can't put it together until every part is painted with just three months to go. And then from there, we're gonna go to Mahood's paint. And uh, he's supposed to paint the chassis tonight at six o'clock in about uh, three hours, two and a half hours, three hours. It's a killer deadline. The longer the paint job, the less time they'll have to assemble the street rod. The body panels, sculptured from foam, are laminated in fiberglass and carbon fiber. By the end of the month, this 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 will be all painted, rubbed, and bitching. They look gotta look ugly before they look good. When they're all apart, they always look ugly. But once it's in the booth and you see the color on it, it's uh, it's gonna look really good. It's gonna look really good. I'm excited. It's gonna be a beautiful car. But Barry's bubble is about to burst. Hey, Wendell, there's a hump in the fender. It's a flaw in the panel. That will delay the paint the job. Right here, see that? Come over here, Wendell. Yeah, Come over here, it's easier to see. Get under. Oh, I can see it. Yeah, OK. See, yeah, it's just right a, here. There's a line right there, too. Maybe that's what they were This about. is going to cost them valuable time. Perfect everywhere. That's all we ask. Just perfection. Nothing more, nothing less. There will be no painting tonight. Less than three months to the Grand National Roadster Show, and Jimmy Shine is cruising. So you think this thing will be ready just for uh, for first color on Friday? Yeah, I do. The frame to his 32 Ford is called a pinch nose high boy, made to Henry Ford specs. But Henry wouldn't spend this much time preparing for paint. The frame is actually turned upside down right now. And he's sounding parts that are going to be covered by engine mounts, um, brake lines, any number of different things. But a lot of this you don't see. 90% of it you're not going to see. All that stuff is judged. They will actually lay on their backs, hold mirrors, and like get over the top of the transmission and shine lights, you know, to see just exactly how good your detail is. So, I mean, the car's got to be 100% or you're just wasting your time. That's why I hate it. I'd just rather go surfing. I'm about to surf, Colby's about to drown. I'm gonna paddle out and then uh, just wing it from there. For Jimmy, no hot rod title is worth cramping his lifestyle. Serve. You know, I, if it, if I wasn't you know a professional car builder, I, I'd be a professional surfer. The only thing I lack is talent. The surfing and hot rodding are very much the same thing. It's all about like a feeling. It's all about just fun. You know, because if you like to surf, you don't like to work. You know, 
hot rodding, you're kind of, you're working at building the car, but you're building a car that can quite possibly break all the laws. You know, it goes too fast, makes too much noise. Same thing with surfing. It's all about a feeling. Right now, the noise is all coming from Barry White's team. We'll actually turn into something here in a few minutes. <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> this guy's good. Hell yeah! <laughs> We got a thing going on where he says whoop whoop, I say hell yeah, but I can't hear him. Hey. Ooh, ooh. Hell yeah! They play hard, but they work harder. That paddle hump hitch fixed with some deft grinding. Ooh, ooh. Hell yeah! It's soon ready for paint. That's, that's as good as we can do that? Uh, Chad. Give me, I need a second opinion over here. But now yeah. there's a problem with the paddle mounts. You can't fix this pit? Why can't you chrome it the way it is? Because it's got two holes in it. It's got a little pit hole. There's going to be like three. Can we braze it? Get out the torch, heat it up, flow some braze in it. Bronze, brass. Can you do that? It's a tiny imperfection that could cost Barry a title. With frame and panels at the paint shop, the engine is next to go, but only after Barry tidies up some loose ends on the 400 horsepower Chevy. We just cut this off. This is the old, this is the mount for the air conditioner. Okay, we're not gonna have air conditioning in the car. Roasters don't need air conditioning. They got the biggest air conditioner ever. So we cut it off. Anything we don't need, we cut off. To make the engine smoother. Barry's team works like a family. Hell yeah! Yeah. A family which helped save Richie the Metal Man from a troubled past. I used to be a little gangbanger, you know, went to jail and all that good stuff. He thanks Hot Rods and his son for turning him around. When I saw my son behind bars, it was, it, it made me open my eyes and say, I don't want him to, he was still little, I didn't, I didn't want him to grow up and see me, you know, behind the glass, wondering why the hell is my dad busted or whatever, you know? Want to be like Daddy and pound some metal? Yeah? Richie's taking the night off to be with his son, Mikey. Yeah, harder. But Barry's working back. There's a Grand National Roadster title to win, and he's playing catch-up. It's what time is it? 10 o'clock at night? It's my time to work. Everything's... Nobody's, nobody's calling, nobody's bothering you. Go have some dinner, come back, put in a few hours. It's fun. It's my time to, to do whatever I want. Nobody's around. Peace. Engines are Jimmy Shine's specialty. He's been preparing this Ford Classic for almost a year. The first Ford Flathead V8 was developed in 1932. This is a later one. 49 to 53 is when these motors were produced. Jimmy's fitted a modern cylinder head system made by Ardun to breathe new life into the old cast iron engine. The intake valves and exhaust valves are in the block. This actually converts it from a flathead to an overhead valve. It puts the valves in the head. And polished chrome is the other shine touch. We have to have all this stuff polished. Once that manifold's bolted on, you can't get to any of this stuff. So it's got to be really nice. He'll handcraft many external parts, but keep the integrity of the original. That's the Jimmy Shine stamp. Jimmy worked on the motor for a long time in the detailing of you know, how the generators mounted and the water pumps and all that type of stuff and all the belts and the intrinsic value of how it all goes together. So we've got a power plant that is uh, second to none. That, that, was, that was gonna be under. 10 weeks from deadline, it's a big day at the Street Rod Repair Company. The concept's frame is back from paint, red and ready for assembly. Sky, full of dreams, but it ain't 
practice with all the works about coming down to this to get it put together and start going. Actually start making some progress, show somebody that what we got. Win, lose, or draw, it's gonna be a great car. That's all that matters. Yeah, I think they're all 1032s. But back at SoCal, Jimmy's frame is still being prepared. One hint of overspray could lose a title. So Jimmy wants every hole plugged. Critical point in the build. This is your foundation for the, for the entire vehicle. If it sucks here, it's gonna be junk at the other end. Painting is one job Jimmy's leaving to an expert. And he's keeping it simple. Eight coats, all black. Mark's just starting to spray red. He says he's gonna be in here about five hours. Barry's brought in the heavy artillery. Paint gun slinger Mark Mahood. And the Street Rod crew is there to watch a master at work. You guys like it? It's pretty, huh? Today, he's doing the red, and he's got to get everything covered, coated evenly in red. Then they put an inner coat clear with a red pearl on it over the top of all this red. And then they put three coats, heavy coats of clear on top of that, so it gives it the depth. And then you, then you sand off usually about one coat of the clear or so to get it, you know, everything perfectly flat and smooth, so. SoCal Speed Shop is home to many replica steel bodies, but right now, the focus is on one. You think this thing's gonna be ready tomorrow to paint? Maybe? Yeah. Uh, the job of filling and sanding back the 32 Ford pinch nose for paint is in Paco Castell's skillful hands. Take me four hours to, to mask it. So I could have done, I, I, I can mask it today. In the race to the Grand National, Barry White takes the lead. The frame, gearbox, and engine are all pearl That's red, great. ready to go. Wow, that is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. It's a one-off house of color, pearl red. That's something that hasn't been done before, and we got it. Today's a great day. I'll be able to sleep tonight. I won't be up in the middle of the night tonight. <laughs> Today's a good day. Yeah, all this stuff's ready to go. Back at SoCal, Jimmy's team is falling behind in the paint preps. It'll take another week to get the rest of the panels ready for the painter. It's gonna be a real push to get this stuff done. I mean, right now we're down to six weeks. We don't have first color on the car yet. It's gonna take a while. This is Paco. How soon is that thing gonna be ready for paint? Probably in uh, three to four days. Showtime is just six weeks away, but Jimmy Shine and his team can't afford to cut corners. Paco was just telling me the other day he just loves doing louvers. I sent him one by one, every, every single one. Punch Louver Rose, another shine hallmark, are laborious to prepare, but have caught the eye of a major auto manufacturer. They wanted me to build something that's reminiscent of a early post-war era hot rod. Ford commissioned Jimmy to customize their F-150 pickup. Move the mass airflow sensor back so it's got four inches in, four inches out. I thought it looks cool sticking through the hood. Looks a little aggressive. The exhaust actually comes out the side of the car. Nobody else has done that. I like it. It also kind of looks like my 34 because I've just got the zoomies sticking out the sides. This car gave Jimmy his reputation. A 34 Ford pickup built in his garage. It's been turning heads for four years. I have cut the thing up, I've chopped it, channeled it, made my own suspension. Um, it's just radically different. And is still a work in progress. I've got a complete vision of this, and right now, the way it is, isn't my complete vision. I know people like it, I like it. But you can't get inside my head and see what I'm thinking. 
You can't see my complete vision. The only way for you to see it is for me to do it. Kids like Jimmy, they only see it one way. They only see it traditionally. Some of their stuff is over the top, way more than what we were when we were kids. Big high fenders and channel drill low and severe chop tops. So I would say it's a, um, it's a severe look at what I did when I was a kid. Barry White street rods also turn heads on the road and in competition, where he's won the title America's Most Beautiful Roadster. The general public, I feel, they always kind of like the far out zoomy cars that they're kind of cutting edge. I mean, to us, America's Most Beautiful Roadster should be cutting edge, new design, new ideas, out there, front of the field kind of thing. Where is, uh, you know, other people have other ideas. Hot rodders and street rodders are two different cultures inhabiting their own territories. Jimmy's hot rod tribe believes in only one thing. That's the thing about being a hot rodder, is driving your car, I can't imagine having a car sitting in your garage under some car cover that you've got untold thousands of dollars in. You won't drive it because it's afraid it might get a scratch or something. To me, you've lost the point. The street rod world is as much about appearance, more at home on the showroom or parking lot. It's not about feeling good, it's about looking good. And an old motto also with street riders is, if it ain't low, it ain't mine. We're not show car guys, we're race car guys. We're hot rod guys. We don't build show cars. In Jimmy's book, if you don't have your car on the tar, you're a pseudo rodder. Pseudo rodder. What the hell is they? What do they mean by pseudo rodders? That means you're fake. Pseudo is fake. So that means you're not really a hot rodder. And a guy with a bunch of junk? What do you think? There's just oil all over it. What the hell would you be if you had a 50-year-old car and you were, would that make you a geek? Broke down on the side of the road, trying to. I think that'd make you a stupid ass. We're only about three miles from where we need to be, too. I think they have a tow truck that follows them, don't they? Natural born rivals. The question is, which way will the judges go? One thing both camps know, the devil will be in the detail. Three eighths fine. Any paint, any kind of residue, if you don't clean it all out, all that stuff galls. I'm just terrified I'm going to drop something and just chip this paint. Both cars need to be assembled with the precision of a jeweler. I like stuff really nice. I mean, I take a great deal of pride in this stuff. Because after the show's over, my name's still on it. Every handcrafted or hand-sourced part is meticulously chromed. It's kind of like opening a Christmas present. Only it's not underpants. And it's not from your mom. There we go. Jimmy's worked almost two years to get to this point. But I like to take everything and put it out on shelves, sort through everything. Once I get everything out, I can look at it, and I can tell you where each and every nut and bolt goes. What the hell is that? Although these two roadsters are worlds apart in design, Jimmy and Barry work only 10 miles from each other in Southern California.
Barry White may be building the Concept 36, but owner Kent Matranga is bankrolling it. He's following the berth like an expectant father. We're going to build the best car that we can build, and it's going to be a special car to me. It's taken a lot of time, effort, thought, uh, commitment, time away from the family and everything else. So it's uh, whatever it does is, is great. What do you think? Is that cool or what? Yeah, that's what it'll look like. We haven't turned off the, the head of that one. I just cleaned it up, but that's what it'll look like. It just goes in like that. So all the suspension pieces are... Everything here, here, here. here. Everything, everything, the, the motor mounts, Everything's half-inch bolts, so all the major components in the chassis will have those. Perfect. Okay. The owner has come to see the engine installed, but he's in for a letdown. The chrome engine mounts do not pass muster. When I can see it that far away, yes, that's, that's, no, that's not acceptable. I used two different places. One did steel and one's doing the aluminum. Well, what kind of steel do they do, man? They did a good job. That's horrible. Yeah, I know that center part. That is horrible. It's got like a gold shadow in it or something? Yeah, not only that, but they buffed it uh, and undercut the crap of it right here. Yeah, but you need it today. Well, I don't now. I can't put them on, so it doesn't yeah. make any difference okay. now. I mean, yeah, I got to have them, but I mean, now we're screwed. Do we have another set? No, we don't. Uh, this is the only pair in the world. <laughs> oh, God. So one, How's that, that feel? feel? This is a big setback. Barry has to think fast. Um, Chad, come here for a sec. What's the possibility you think of making these out of stainless? Yeah, if you go get the material. Because they can't do this till Monday. The quickest fix is to fabricate another pair of mounts in stainless steel. We'll but either way, the engine fitting is on hold. Cool, thank you. Totally different place, sorry. That's not your fault. Just five weeks away from their showdown at the Grand National Roadster Show. Jimmy Shine and Barry White still have a long road ahead. For two years, they've designed and fabricated their roadsters. Now it's down to the crunch, the final assembly. Uh-oh. See, instead of hiding stuff, hiding wiring, hiding engines, all that kind of crap, making covers for all that kind of crap, I like to make it just interesting, detail it. In a Jimmy Shine hot rod, there are no secrets. Each part is exposed as a work of art. Like you'll notice, like our motor, this blown Arden, there's no cover over it. You don't pop the hood and see this big, you know, tin, half a trash can cover in my motor. You'll see it. It'll be fine, it'll be detailed, mechanical, it'll look bitchin'. Okay, let's watch the windshield on the roof coming out. Barry's Concept 36 is now well ahead of Jimmy's 32 Ford. And it needs to be. Two more of Barry's customers want their cars ready for the Grand National Roadster Show. Be careful, because it's want to tip up. They won't be competing with the Concept 36, but they must be finished. What do you think, boys? It's red. We haven't just bitten off one big chunk, we've bitten off three. It's a major headache. Barry deploys his team to the other cars. He'll have to assemble the 36 solo. It's Bedlam at the Street Rod Repair Company. But Barry's confident he can deliver all three cars. We can't take all the cars to one paint shop because we have too many cars to, to paint, basically. Um, so we, uh, we have to choose different paint shops. And paint, painting is probably the most difficult part of the process of building a hot rod. Jimmy's got his own paint team in-house. Now, these guys are incredibly good painters, body men. 
best I've ever worked with, ever. Finally, all the bodywork is prepared and ready for eight coats of Jimmy Shine Henry Ford Model T Black. From a traditionalist point of view, we think that, that a lot of the charm of the early cars gets removed when it goes into concept. We find that most of our customers come here exactly for that reason. They want a traditionally styled car. Barry's now juggling precious time away from the Concept 36. Believe me, you will pay for it. He's taken his eye off the main game to take care of business. You know what? It looks pretty good. Now, don't get crazy. Put it on the engine stand so you can paint the bottom. Valve covers intake, all that stuff's going to get changed. We're going to flip the body on its nose. We'll pull this out, put a, put a plug in it. Underside, just gun finish it. Tape off the water ports. Doors off, deck lid off. Just paint it red. The bigger, the better. Yeah, oh yeah. And I get paint down in here. Whatever you got. When I put the new one on, it'll look bitchy. You got it? We're all on the same page? That's pretty much it. I'll pick it up in three hours. <laughs> if somebody doesn't come, come through on time, this could be disastrous for us. We're going to make it happen one way or another. We're not going to miss out on it. They'll all be there one way or another. Even if there's somebody's dead body in the trunk, they'll be there. Take the long way home tonight. Maybe Meanwhile, home Jimmy is feeling relaxed and on target. But Barry has his hands full, and it's starting to show. Don't smile at me. I love you, Barry. Smacking. Chad and Richie prepare the third car, an original 56 Checker Marathon cab. Don't you know, John? Look at him, he's in the zone. All this talking. I'm not gonna do one. Both you're not gonna do one. The taxi is being souped up with a brand new supercharged 650 horsepower engine. Barry's just starting on the concept suspension. About time we finally got all the pieces we need. We can actually start assembling some parts finally. Finally, it's been killing us. We'll be here for a while tonight, putting parts on. I got my fingers on the edge, and I'm holding the paper just away from the edge, feeling it with my fingertip, just so we don't cut that edge off. Barry's relying on Tony Correa to put the sparkle into his jewel. It'll take Tony 80 hours to sand, buff, and polish this pearl. If Tony misses a single blemish or any dust imperfections, it could cost Barry the title. Anybody's got a combination to a safe, I can crack it. I have no goddamn fingerprints left, you know. There's a lot of prep work in getting this thing to this stage. For the perfect finish, Tony uses a succession of finer and finer sandpaper. I basically, I'm up to 2,000 grit now. I'm going to be up to 3,000 here by the end of the night. What that is to get it really nice and smooth. So when we go to buff it, it'll bring up a lot higher gloss. Across town, Jimmy has time on his hands and bad things on his mind. You know, he's going to hate me. Barry White is absolutely going to hate me after all this is done. Perhaps it was Jimmy's voodoo, but things are not going well at Barry's shop. It's just a, like a low spot there. Actually, it's a dirt spot. What oh, yeah, it you is. see it? What it, it yeah. does, it drips around the, uh, right. the dirt. Right. Tiny dust particles create minute craters of paint that sometimes can't be rubbed out. I had this happen on Frank Curry's car to me. End up, I end up repainting the whole car for it. A total repaint is the last thing Barry wants to hear. Well, let's see where it ends up. I mean, that's all we can do at this point, right? Yeah. Barry can only hope. It'll be beautiful. Tomorrow is Thanksgiving, but no holiday. Thanksgiving is going to be held in the shop this year. Well, it is for me, for our family. Turkey and hot rods, that's the way it's going to go down. We'll be here now nonstop until 
into January. We'll be here every day. So it's takeout turkey delivered by wife Becky. We got turkey, corn, green beans, mashed potatoes, and uh, pumpkin pie and pecan pie. Let's eat. Being a traditionalist, Jimmy is taking Thanksgiving off with his brother Ned. I'm an old turkey carver. <laughs> From way back. But Barry has a car to build, and the countdown has started. Yum. Be right down to the wire, getting it ready. Um, and having three of them this year, too, is, is really putting a a strain on him, but you know, having to deal with the painters and the polishers and the chromers and everything. Thanksgiving, everybody just sits around and gorges themselves. Then they drink a bunch of beer, watch TV and pass out. It's on the inside. After turkey, more suspension. Now what we're doing is we're nitpicking every little piece of chrome. We're making nuts, we're making bolts. We're, you know, like these little screws here, they're just sitting in here. I'll take them over to the lathe and I'll cut them so they match the top screws. You know, you just, you're constantly trying to make everything better. To do that, he must think like a judge. The judges will get down and they'll look at every single thing that you did. But the general public, they, they really, unless they're really a car enthusiast, you know, they don't, they can't get close enough to the car to really see exactly all the things that you've done to it, so. Both men are building as much for themselves as the judges. Their pride, their reputation goes into every part. You need something, you need a part. You need something to perform a function that it wasn't designed for. Figure out how to do it on your own. That looks good. Oh. Barry's engine has been ready to install for two weeks. Oh. What we hit? Something hit. But the mounting brackets needed rechroming. And that's put him behind the eight ball. Let's get the bolt in to get it lined up right now. The off-the-shelf Chevy V8 fits like a glove. Is it good? Jimmy wants to test his engine before he mounts it. After modifying the Ford Ardun power plant, he's taking no chances. This one's gonna stick. About 8,000 RPM, full load on it. Yeah, right. <laughs> Two years of work. Pooh. Remember, engines are Jimmy's strong suit, and he has high hopes for the massive V8. See, all this is hooked up to simulate, you know, load, uh, actually like driving down the road, resistance, you know, pushing a vehicle, pushing a car. Well, if there's a problem with the motor, yeah, we want, we'd rather know now, because it's a lot easier to work on it. Don't take a chance of hurting the, hurting the car, hurting the paint, hurting something. Stay the hell out of that van. That is not music to Jimmy's ears. It's now only a month out from the Grand National Roadster Show. So what's Barry White doing in a bike shop? So you just gotta drill this one when you get it back? Yeah. We're gonna do that before you leave. Believe it or not, this is where the Concepts wheels will be made. It's a radical approach. It's a, it's a one-off wheel. All the lug nuts or bolts that hold the wheel on will come in from the back side. So from the front side, there won't be anything except what you see right there. Smooth and modern, the Barry White stamp. Fantastic. Well, we got to go beat up some painters. OK. Thank you. Okay. Looks bitching. All righty. Back at the shop, 
buff man Tony Correa has put in the overtime to get rid of the concept's paint imperfections. There'll be no need for a repaint. No such luck with Barry's second roadster. The paint shop is behind schedule and Barry's on the warpath. There's no gray area on this, it's gotta be there. It will be there. It may have a dead painter in it, but it'll be there. The car was supposed to be painted yesterday. Well, supposed to get it back yesterday, Sunday afternoon, and uh, well, nobody's talking to me. Went by there twice, and they weren't there. You weren't here yesterday. I can tell you that. So, that's not good. Well, I was here. Nobody else was. I know. The second Roadster body, also painted red, is still wet. It should have been dried and sanded a week ago. <sighs> Supposed to have a guy rubbing it out. <sighs> Wayne, this is getting really difficult, man. We're a couple of months late. Barry doesn't know it, but Jimmy's got bigger problems. Whoa, of course. OK, go ahead and relight it. No, let me turn it over. Jimmy's a cool customer, but now he's worried. And the chassis is done. It's waiting for the body. Barry left his cool at the door. I was like, I'll do it, but this thing was supposed to be done. I mean, I don't want to get off here, but man, everybody's passing the buck, and I'm the guy that's got to pick it up at the end. That's working good. After an agonizing wait, technicians isolate a fuel problem and try again. <laughs> Stand right there, we're going to try it. But that's not the last of Jimmy Shine's worries. Oil pressure 51 pounds, you got two and a half fuel. The big test will be taking the Ford Ardun up to maximum power. That's a big gamble. If anything breaks, it could be game over for the title. Sounds pretty good, too. This hot rod build off is falling apart. Well, I've committed three cars to be in there, and this is one of them. It's two months late. The stakes have just gone through the roof. Next time. It's going to be done. They're all going to be done. One month to go. Things were working really good right up until it blowed up. The stakes are high. I don't like being here. Barry White's under the gun. That's the most ridiculous cap I've ever seen. Jimmy Shine's losing his cool. You don't want to talk to me about it? You're getting ignored. The gloves are off. Nice has nothing to do with this. But can they make the deadline? No way. I thought that was a fishing contest over there. There's no car. Now what the hell happened? I thought I had this thing planned out a little better. Oh, come on, you sissy. The heat is on. You can take pictures of the car when I light it on fire. It's like a nice little dig, you know, if I would.